patchwork, patch, patchwork cardigan. It's hard to say. Ciao, friends! Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're doing the red square for the J.W. Anderson Harry Styles patchwork cardigan. This is probably the hardest one so far. Remember, I'm trying to make all of these as easy and beginner friendly as possible. This one is a little bit trickier, but we'll learn a new stitch today called the waistcoat stitch. And it looks like knitting. It looks exactly like knitting. It looks exactly like the square on his sweater. So we're going to get started on that. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks! So here's our waistcoat stitch. See, it looks just like knitting. It doesn't look like our typical crochet stitch. It looks like you were knitting, but I'm not a knitter. I don't know how to knit. I did when I was little. I didn't know the name of any of the stitches. I wasn't very great at it, probably because I was nine. I really wasn't awesome at it, but I was always happier with a crochet hook. It was a lot easier for me to use, probably because I had tiny hands. So what I did was I looked at a picture on, I'm pretty sure I was on Pinterest, a picture of Harry Styles wearing this cardigan and just looked at the red one and went, oh, that's easy. I'm not a knitter, but I do know how to make this stitch. It's called the waistcoat stitch. So we are going to make this square today using big twist value. All of them are big twist value, which is a medium four weight. It's nice and soft. I think you're going to like this yarn. It's from Joann's and it has a great price point. Often go, it can go on sale sometimes as low as $1.99 for this great big skein. So I thought that was a great place for a beginner to start and trying to make these as easy as possible, but you're still going to learn a new stitch. So that's the fun part. So we're going to do our red stitch today. And for this one, it works up pretty tight. I chose to use a four millimeter hook instead of the five that I was using on some of the other ones. I'm using my four millimeter hook today. Here's my four millimeter prim, which is one of my babies. This is like probably my favorite hook. And the reason that I have differences in whether I'm using a four or a five is because I wanted everything to be 19 right here and still be five and a half inches wide, approximately five and a half inches wide by six and a half inches tall. So it took me a little while to play around with that just to make sure that everything was had the right stitch counts, but see now when it's time to attach these 19 stitches on this end and 19 stitches on this end, it doesn't matter which stitch we used, it's going to be a lot easier to connect them. So that's why I'm using a four millimeter hook instead of a five. So we're going to do our slip knot on our four millimeter hook and chain 20 loosely because we want to work into those back bumps. Nineteen and twenty. See, I did that very loosely. All right, so there's our chain of twenty. We want to turn it over, and we want to work a single crochet into each one of these back bumps. So there'll be nineteen single crochets all the way down. And to get our waist coast started, try really hard not to make these super tight stitches. You want to make them a little looser if you possibly can. kind of big floppy stitch. Not too huge, but you want to be able to work into them in a very different way. So one loose single crochet in each back bump down our chain. And there's number 18 in the back bump. Nice and loose. And number 19. And there's my last one. Remember, all of my squares start out with the same base. It's a chain of 20 and single crochet of 19 so that all of them are going to fit together very nicely when it's time to build our sweater. Because believe me, you're going, to, you're going to like that very much when it's time to attach all these together. That you're going to have a nice base, base lines for keeping everything kind of in line. It's going to be great. All right, now our waistcoat stitch, waist coat stitch. It's kind of hard to say that quickly. So what we're going to do is chain one and turn our work. Now this is going to work a little bit differently. 
Her very first stitch, of course, the very first and the very flat last stitch are going to be normal single crochet. So we're just going to go into this very first place you can work in single crochet. The very first stitch and the very last stitch of every row. But now, in order to do a waistcoat stitch, you are going to want to work not here like we usually do. We have to work into this little V right here. Right there. That's why we want to make this first starting place loose so that we can actually get our hook in there. It helps if you have a nice pointy hook too. So right here is where I want to go. Right here between, there's a V right here. And we want to work right in there. Pull through and single crochet. Let's see how that makes a little V. All of these little V's looks just like knitting. So we want to do that again for the next one. Right in here. There's two little bars. In between those bars is where we want to put our hook. There's two little bars. So this one takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the right spot and after you get this first row done, the first row is the hardest one. It will be super easy. Go into this one again. The first row is the hardest, especially if you made your single crochets a little bit tight. Try not to make any of these stitches too tight. It ends up being, they end up being tight enough stitches anyway, as you can see. You do not need to have extra tension and keep these tight at all. It's better to be a little bit loose than it would be to be tight. And there was my 18th and now my very last stitch is going to be a normal single crochet in our very, very last stitch right here. Right here. It's a normal old single crochet. The first and last stitch will be a normal, normal regular old single crochet so we keep nice edges right here. All right, so that was our first row of waistcoat and you can see it already looks like something. It already has all those little V's. It looks just like knitting. Chain one, turn your work. Our very first stitch is a single crochet. I'm going to mark that so it's a little bit easier to see. And then working down, we want to work into those V's again, right into the single crochet, not the top of the single crochet, but into the stitch. So there's our first one. I'm going to go right in here, single crochet. There's another one. See those two bars right there? We want to go in between those two bars. The next stitch right here, there's our two bars. Just a normal single crochet, like that. Once you get through the two bars, the rest of it is the same. Yarn over and pull through. Through the two bars. So we're going through the middle of our single crochet instead of the top. And there's our two, there's our two bars. Here. And so here will be my last waistcoat stitch. And then my very, very last stitch right here is going to be a single crochet like normal. So there we go. Chain one, turn your work and do the exact same thing. The first stitch and the last stitch are always a single crochet, but then we start working in between these V's. And it's really easy after you get that very first row done because you're working into working into a waistcoat stitch instead of at the very beginning here we had to work into a single crochet so it's a little bit tighter. This is a little easier now to find the spaces between those vertical bars. And 
Now here is my last waistcoat stitch. And then my last stitch that's marked right here is a normal old, regular old single crochet. Right there. So that is what you do all the way across for a total of 28 high in order to get it to be approximately five and a half by approximately six and a half. We need 28 rows high of our waistcoat stitch. It's because we're working into the stitch instead of the top of it, so it's making everything a little bit tighter and a little bit shorter. So we need 28 stitches. So I'll meet you up here when I get done with my 28. Here's my last waistcoat. And then the very last stitch is a single crochet. And there's my red rectangle. So that was 28 rows of our waistcoat and now our last row will be the same as it has been on all of the other squares to make it kind of match our beginning chain and make it end there so everything's going to fit together nicely. Chain one, turn our work and do a single crochet in every stitch, normal old single crochet in the top of the stitch all the way down. So you'll have 19 single crochets just like regular old single crochets all the way down. Almost done. I've got two left and there's number 19. And then you just fasten off and pull it through. And there we go. Approximately five and a half by approximately six and a half. With our four millimeter hook and our red yarn give us the look of a knit stitch but with our crochet hook, which is super fun. I love this stitch. It does make it nice and dense. It's a really tight stitch, but I went down to a four millimeter, so it stayed within my guidelines of the five and a half by six and a half. If I use the five hook, it's gonna be way bigger, and I didn't want that to happen. But I still have my beginning and my ending of 19 stitches so that we can put them together very happily, and I don't have one design that's way bigger than everything else. They're all 19 by 19 on the bottom and on the top. The sides we'll get to later, but all of these are going to be the same and they're almost all the same width. According to the J.W. Anderson pattern people, even though it's a knit pattern, the square count is still going to be accurate. You need 16 of these. 16 of these in the waistcoat stitch will get you what you need for your square count or rectangle count for your cardigan. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back real soon. Thanks. Bye.